Good evening, Jules fans. Welcome back to another episode of Jules in the Blood TV. I am flying solo tonight because Boz is helping Stocky out with charity ride related stuff. I don't know whether he's icing his thighs or I'm not really sure. Um, but before we go any further, obviously, I'm sure you're aware myself, Boz, Stocky himself, Simon have all been spamming Twitter, spamming Facebook. Um, if you can go and check out Stocky's GoFundMe page, reference the charity ride that he is in the middle of, taking in 10 uh, football league grounds across the county, uh, finishing tomorrow night at 5pm at Sheppey United. Uh, please, please, please donate as much as you can, whether it's a quid, a five or a ten or whatever. It will be greatly appreciated by Stocky and everyone else. Um, so yeah, that's the first thing. Um, but on to the football um, plenty to get through and I will start by talking about uh, Tuesday night, uh, penalty defeat in the Carabao Cup to championship side Millwall but we did not disgrace ourselves in any means. Um, Steve Lovell um, said immediately after the game in his press conference, it has been a decent start and it's another game where we haven't lost in 90 minutes. I am taking that as a third game for us that we undefeated in the time we play. I just look at our performance and the way we played and the system that we played and I was pleased. If we can take that performance into the rest of the season in League One, I think we'll be okay. I think he's doing the boys a little bit of a disservice. I think if we continue to play like we have done in the first 270 minutes of the season, we'd be more than okay. I think we'd be up there somewhere decent. I'm not going to say we're going to get into playoffs or win promotion or anything like that, but it's been a really encouraging start. Um, I think if someone had offered this at the start of the season, we'd have taken it. So, um, yeah, really, really encouraging performance. Um, Mr Lovell wasn't too disappointed that there's no extra time in the early rounds of this competition anymore. No extra time, no problem is another headline on the back of the Medway Messenger. And he said, with the game now coming up on Saturday for us to have another half hour of extra time, I think fatigue may have started to come in and that's where you can start having injuries. So he's quite happy with the format, obviously disappointed in the fact that we got knocked out. Um, but yeah, plenty of pluses, I believe. I didn't go to the game, but everything that I read on social media was really positive, really encouraging. Um, Josh Parker's penalty aside, bless him, that is still orbiting the sun, I believe. Um, and chasing Chris Waddle's Italian 90 effort around the world. Um, it's one of them, though, isn't it? A penalty shootout. We all know that as England fans that it's a bit of a lottery. And we all know as England fans how to take a defeat from 12 yards, I suppose, at the end of a game. So um, it's one of them. Fair play to standing up and taking one and to all the others. But unfortunately, it was only Loco Neal that managed to disturb the back of the nets. Um, but yeah, in terms of the positives, Alex Lacey back had a really good game by all accounts. Callum Riley back, got minutes in his legs. Connor Wilkinson returned from the bench. Tommy's made his first start of the season. Um, squad depth is looking really, really good. Um, plenty of options in attacking areas. Alex Lacey gives us more strength in depth defensively, so that gives us four centre-halves if you include Finn O'Mara. Uh, Barry Fuller got minutes, which is great. Another out-and-out out right back, uh, which we've lacked for years and years. Um, so yeah, just a, a generally a very positive evening. Just unfortunately, the outcome didn't quite go our way from the penalty spot. Um, looking at Luke Cordell's final paragraph of his match report, which I like to do, he said, losing on penalties is never nice, but the Jules shouldn't waste any time feeling sorry for themselves. A good showing against championship opposition during 90 minutes should keep the momentum as they head up to Walsall for a game that really does matter. And of course, some people might say, oh, well, we don't like losing, we've lost momentum and that. But I think as I tweeted before the game, shortly after the game, we said in the preview as well um, on the Monday review, the Carabao Cup's not the be-all and the end of our season. It's not going to define what we do in League One. So it would have been nice to go through, of course, but let's not cry over spilt milk or miss penalties. And we move on to Walsall, and I'm pretty sure if we go up there and get a positive result, not many people remember Tuesday night at the Den. Um, but yeah, back to the performance again. Seem to have created plenty once more. Um, first blank of the season after netting five times in the first two league games. Um, but we could have nicked it at the end. Brandon Allen was unlucky. Another one just drifted wide at the post. Um, but he could be a case if he gets another one. The, the floodgates may open. Regan Charles Cook, decent effort. Just missed the far post as well after that. Another one, he could go on a bit of a run if he gets one. A la Elliot this last season. Um, Josh Park had a shot charge down. Um, Tom Eves was unlucky in the first half, connected with a Bradley Garmston cross and just flicked one over the bar. And um, 
Bradley Stevenson had three efforts um, all blocked from good positions. So plenty of attacking intent again. Um, strong defensively again, another clean sheets. We've only conceded once in 270 minutes now over the three games, um, which is really, really promising. And I think pace and power could be the theme this season, recurring over and over as the campaign wears on. We've got it in abundance. Um, just looking at Tuesday's team again, Regan Charles Cook, Brandon Anlon, both of their chances come because of electrifying pace and allowing them to get away from defenders. Josh Parker's no slouch. Uh, Bradley Garmston at left back's no slouch. We've got Elliot List to come back into the fold. Uh, we're very mobile in the centre of the park now in terms of fluidity and, and changing positions, which is great, which doesn't make us rigid. Um, yeah, so just really, really good. Um, one person that is not uh, not been involved so far is this man coming up on your screen, and he talks for the shouting men this week. That is, of course, Josh Reese, our summer signing from Bromley, had a really good campaign in the National League last season, um, and he just talks about. Being, being nearly fit now, not too far away. Apparently it was an ankle problem that he picked up in training, just planted his foot across and something went slightly, but it wasn't as bad as initially first feared and he's, he's not too far away a few days now, I think. I think Saturday might come too soon, but we'll discuss that further in team news in a little while when we preview Walsall. Um, he had a really good campaign at Bromley last season, but um, it's going to be tough getting back into our side at the moment. There's a couple in front of him, I think, and there's a couple that have probably surprised us. Um, and I'm going to talk about one of them in more depth in a minute, but um, it's another option, more depth um, added, more options added for Steve Lovell to pick from when he is fit again. Might just take him a couple of weeks to get up to speed, so I'd imagine if he, when he does come back he'll be on the bench to start with and then it's up to him to force his way into the side. Um, and you can never have too many people playing well at the end of the day. Um, interestingly, had a photo taken with Neymar in 2012 at Arsenal's Colney training ground when he was there as a kid. Nice hair, Josh. But yeah, desperate to play my part is the big headline. I think that's the case with everyone at the moment. Steve Lovell can't reiterate enough. Keep saying we've got a good group. They've all got their heads screwed on. They all want to work hard. They all want to learn. And on top of that, they all seem half decent footballers at this level. So um be good to see Josh Reese back and fit. Um, but moving on now next to this man in focus. Going to talk about him a bit more in depth. He's one that surprised me and he's coming up on your screen right now. That is Bradley Stevenson, who made his first appearance Tuesday night in a different competition to the Checker Trade Trophy. I'll be completely honest, um, end of last season, I couldn't see where he'd get in. Um, throughout pre-season, I didn't think we'd, we'd see much of him, but he really impressed me in the games that I did see over the summer. See him at Sheppey, he scored the first goal, took it really well, calm and composed, was good on the ball, was a threat. Uh, played in a slightly more advanced role than he's probably used to as he played up top. Um, was very good when he played at Dartford. Um, Second half, I think he came on. He was a big part of that 3-0 victory. We scored all our goals second period. So, And he just seems to have um, pushed himself in front of a couple of other youngsters. Um, one being the name that, that's always on everyone's lips, and I've mentioned already, that's Darren Oldacre. He seems to have gone past him um, in terms of being in contention now to be a first-team regular in and around the match day squad. And probably Ben Chapman as well. He was another one who we may have thought was further ahead, further advanced last season, but doesn't seem to be the case. Steve Lovell spoke really highly of him in the paper. Um, I thought he was excellent, said Jill's boss Steve Lovell, comment on Stevens' performance in Millwall. He came on and he was confident, positive, and that is the way he plays. It was good to see, and it was good for him. I was pleased with his performance, and he has come on great since pre-season. I think there will be big things for Bradley. Let's hope so. Again, you can't have too many players playing well. You can't have too many good footballers at any level. Um, for me, he's in and around that matchday squad now. He's got bags of energy, technically looks decent enough. Um, he's got two good feet and he's going to play without fear being at that age. So it'd be great to monitor his progress through the season um, and see how much involvement he does get in league games and bigger cup games. Um, but obviously that depends now on FA Cup starting in the winter and how far we go in that. But yeah, really promising start for Bradley and uh, long may it continue. Um, so yeah, that's all the... Uh, Basically, that's the weekly roundup. And now we move on and talk about this lot. Mm -hmm. 
This coming Saturday, we travel to the Midlands to the Bescott Stadium to take on Walsall, who have had a decent start. I will sit here and eat a little bit of humble pie at the moment. I had them down to finish bottom. I had them down to get relegated. It may still happen, but they've made a really good start. Uh, first two league games, they picked up a win at home to Plymouth and they've taken a point off Scunthorpe. Two really good sides last season who were up challenging for the playoffs all the, all the way through. So that's a really good start for, for, for the Saddlers. Um, I feared from a lot in the summer because they lost Erhun Ostuma, who went to Bolton in the Championship, and I just couldn't see where the goals were going to come from. Um, they lost another striker in Bakayoko, I think went to Coventry before the window closed. Um, not prolific, but obviously does a lot of good off, off the wall, uh, off the wall, off the ball work. Um, but in fairness to them, they bought in a couple of new recruits and they hit the ground running and scored. They've got Andy Cooking from Tranmere, and he scored in the opening day victory at Plymouth. Um, and Zeshi Ishmael, who I actually had down as one to potentially target for us at the end of last season. He's got two in his first three games there. Um, I think he got one in the week. They beat Tranmere in the League Cup to progress to the second round. So fair play to Walsall, fair play to, to their manager. He started really well. It is only early days, like we've said. Um, season isn't won and lost in the first 10 days. It's, it's a long old slog. It's a nine-month campaign, but momentum, confidence, winning always breeds, you know, more confidence, so fair play to them, they've had a decent start, um, but yeah, we're playing really well, so I don't think we go up there with anything to fear, I think we go up there and we play our normal game, and if we do that and perform to anywhere near the levels that we have in the, the first three fixtures that we've taken part in, I think we'll have a great chance of picking up at least a point and maybe all three. In terms of team news, we've already spoken about Josh Rees, um, it looks like Saturday's going to come too, far, too fast for him, and also Elliot List. And uh, Steve Lovell has already confirmed that Dean Parrott will be a week away due to the hamstring problem that he picked up last week in the Burton victory. Um, but everyone else is available, which is good to see. Um, in terms of a team, oh, I would probably revert to the 11 that finished um, against Burton last Saturday. Um, so my team would be Thomas Holy in goal, a back four of Luke O'Neill, Gabriel Zaquani. Max Amar and Bradley Garmston. I know a few have said that Alex Lacey was very, very good on Tuesday and deserves to start, but I just think he's only one game. We need to manage him still. He's had a lot of injury problems. So for me, Zach Quarley comes straight back in next to Max Amar and we keep that same back four. So Bradley Garmston at left back, midfield four in a diamond of Billy Bingham, Mark Byrne, Regan Charles Cook and Josh Parker. They can all interchange. It's pretty fluid. One goes, one sits. They all know their role, which is really good. And up top, I'd stick to Thomas Eves and Brandon Hanlon who have looked a real threat since uh, the opening day. Substitutes for me would be Thomas Hadler, Barry Fuller, Alex Lacey, Callum Riley, Navid Nasseri, Connor Wilkinson, and I can't decide between the last one, which would be Bradley Stevenson or Liam Nash. I just think I'd probably be inclined to sway to more Bradley Stevenson this week because of the fact that we've already got Connor Wilkinson on the bench and effectively three strikers starting in Josh Parker, Tom Eves and Brandon Hanlon. So, but it's a tight call. Nash has done nothing wrong. Um, but Stevenson was really good Tuesday evening. So good problems to have for Steve Lovell. Um, in terms of prediction, Boz did text me earlier and he said, can you tell him my prediction, which I think he went for 2-1 to Jules and he had Parker and Hanlon to score. I hope I've got that right, Boz. And I've gone even more positive and I have said it will finish Walsall nil, Gillingham at two and I'm going for the front two that start. Brandon Hanlon, Thomas Eves with the goals. As I've already said, uh, please go and check out Stocky's GoFundMe page. Please dig deep and donate what you can. Um, sadly, won't be at the game Saturday. It was one that I'd targeted as an away fixture this season, but I have double booked myself. I've got a family barbecue to go to. So I will be there in spirit, uh, constantly checking Twitter whilst eating my burgers and my chicken wings and my sausages. Um, to anyone that's going, have a safe trip up there and back. Cheer them on, be loud, be proud. Um, as you was at Accrington, as we all were at home on Saturday, as you all were again on Tuesday night. Um, it does make a difference, I'm sure. We get told it along uh, plenty of time. So, um, as always, thanks for watching. Please comment in the box below on YouTube, Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter. You know what to do by now. Please keep sharing. Nearly 850. Woohoo, mental. Um, and until next time, up the Jills.